Cricket. DJ Bravo, first of all, from the Sportsmax Zone, let's say congratulations to your latest achievements and uh, keep up the good work, my brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Uh, talk to us about what this achievement means for you, because this has never been done in, in international cricket. Uh, T20, the newest format of cricket, but we've seen so many milestones over the years with the different cricketers celebrating them. Uh, now you will be forever the first to reach 500. What does that mean to you? It means a lot. It's a great feeling. Um, obviously, when T20 cricket started uh, back in 2008, 2007 or something like that, but I never imagined uh, a career that I have um, where T20 is concerned. I always wanted to be um, a test player that, you know, I've done great for West Indies. Um, you know, I had a very good start with my international career, both in one day international and test cricket. So uh, when my test dream was cut short back in 2010, um, it took me five years before I officially announced my retirement from test cricket. And I said to myself, between 2010 and 2015, it's where I decided that, you know, 20, T20 cricket is where my journey should go now. And um, celebrating 500 wickets today um, at my home ground at the Queen's Park Oval, where it all started for me at age eight. That is where I first played my cricket game at the Oval. And, you know, to get this landmark and achieve it in front of my teammates in front in the, in the same club that I grew up as a kid. Yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, you, you've had we could describe it in some ways, uh, DJ Bravo, a bit of a roller coaster career, given um, you know some of the off the field issues that you've you've endured. Um, you've you actually retired from international uh, cricket and came out of retirement. Uh, you will turn 37 years old in in October. About the position that you are in now in your career. The T20 World Cup is still pending. Um, of course, it should have been played in October. But how much more does DJ, off, DJ Bravo have to offer? I have a lot more. <laughs> um, I'm here as long as I keep myself fit and healthy. I think that's the most important thing. Um, yes, I'm 36. It'll be 37 in October, but I don't feel that way. Um, I pride myself a lot on my, my fitness. And the passion I have for the game to always compete, to always do well, to always win cricket games, to whichever team I play for. That drive and desire and that hunger will always remain in me as long as I'm able to walk on a cricket field. So I don't allow my age to uh, get the better of me or whether um, you know someone criticize, criticize me or something like that. I, I stay focused on what I want to achieve. Uh, I have accomplished a lot over the years, over a 16 year career. And I just want to keep pressing on and, and also I see myself now as that kind of father figure to the younger players in the region and just to pass on my knowledge and, 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 and keep enjoying the game. Bravo, they say records are meant to be broken. Do you see anybody um, creeping up to your record anytime soon? I hope so. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's there for a while, uh, for only a, a matter of time. Um, you know, I said in a interview earlier on today, I see the likes of Sunil Narang, um, you know, Rashid Khan, obviously he's only 20, 21, have a, a, another 15, 20 years ahead of him. And he's a quality spinner, um, you know, Lasset Malinga uh, don't have much time, but as you can see with those stats, he's easily the best bowler. And uh, we have to respect that. I, I, I ad admire someone like him. I also learned from him, you know, we played yeah. together with Mumbai Indians a few times together and recently we played together in the T10, which both of us, um, you know, we won that tournament as well with some great combination of dead bowling in, in T10. So again, it's there to be broken. I, I hope one day somebody break it at the end of the day. Um, it's just about enjoying other players' success as well. We play a sport that we compete against each other, we compete hard. I'm happy to be the first, but I hope I'm not the first and only. 
Well, bravo, Lance and I are massive TKR supporters and fans. We have George on the panel who gave up the Guyana Amazon Warriors and he was looking for a team. Tried to convince him to come across the TKR. <laughs> we didn't do well enough. He decided to go with the Patriots. Let's talk about the strength of our team and how Patriots, we're heading for the guys, fourth. Patriots. <laughs> he picked the Patriots. Patriots, he got. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. Well, you know, TKR, at the end of the day, the land of the champions, three time titles. I, I can't understand how you can go Patriots. You know, but, um, it is what it is. All the teams are good. Talavas have two titles. Tridents have two. Uh, we have three. Um, it's, and the tournament is still wide open for anyone. You know, we start well. Yes, we start well. But that doesn't mean to say we guarantee to win the tournament. We still have to play good cricket. There's some dangerous players, some very good teams. Uh, we, the Night Riders, we uh, you know, take each every, each and every game very seriously. Uh, we just want to win cricket games and, you know, put ourselves in a position where we can get to the finals and anything can happen after that. Uh, Dwayne, you, we, we have, we've had in the past a raging debate on the Sports Mag Zone about your greatness as a T20 player. We had that, that we, we had a stirring debate, I think it was last year, when I declared that DJ Bravo is undoubtedly a great T20 bowler. I won't tell you what some other people said, that's not for now. But, 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 but I say that to say this, I say that to say this, even before today's milestones, even before today's milestones, I was of no doubt that it, it is not arguable that DJ Bravo is a great T20 player, a great T20 bowler. I want to ask you, to hear of yourself being talked about in that way, even if people don't agree, but everybody who debates that topic has to put Dwayne John Bravo in the argument. How does that make you feel about what you've accomplished in your career so far? Yeah, it's definitely a great feeling because whenever you hear um, people making comparison with others, you know for sure that they are up there as, as you mentioned, the greatest or one of the greats or so, you know, you always hear people talk about Lara and Tenduka. You hear about that today on uh, ESPN Crick Info, where it's over, I think, I I am the most wicket taker in CPL two times, BPL, two times IPL, Purple Cap Holder, Big Bash. So I dominate in every tournament that I play in, and I win every tournament. So I think along with Pollard and Russell, we all have the most titles as players as well. And you know, we are all Caribbean boys, West Indian players doing our stuff. And you know, we all have our different individual achievements. Um, you know, all of us at some point in time will be mentioned as one of the greats to ever play the game. DJ, you, you didn't have to go to cricket for, for all those stats because we've dropped those stats <laughs> here regularly on sports yeah. especially when we did our ultimate T20 selection a week ago. And I tell you what, okay. all of our panelists agreed. On, before we picked one player, most of, the, well, most of the panelists agreed that the ultimate T20 11 of all time, taking, taking into consideration international games and franchise cricket, that their 11 would be DJ Bravo, Chris Gale, Andre Russell, and eight others. So your name was there even before. It was because of those numbers. <laughs> there you go. So, okay, so, so, okay. so let me ask you this, though. Let me ask you this, though. Yeah. When you consider, I want to talk about the CPL specifically. When the CPL came, people said, well, all right, the IPL is there, so the Caribbean men are looking for a Caribbean version of the CPL. Maybe it won't be as successful because we don't have a culture of T20 cricket yet in this part of the world in the way that the Indians have cotton down to it from when England invented it. How, how, what's your assessment of how the CPL has grown since inception and how the fans know in the Caribbean Take, have taken to T20 cricket by virtue of what the CPL has meant? Yes, CPL means a lot to uh, all of us as players, um, and, uh, and not only uh, the players, but the people of the Caribbean. You know, people look forward to going to the CPL games every year. Um, unfortunately, because of the pandemic this year, no one is allowed to be uh, come and watch the games, but I think CPL also have uh, give us the birth of the likes of, uh, you know, you look at uh, Shafin Rutherford, you look at Kimo Paul, you look at Nicholas Puran, um, Shema Hitmaya, um, you know, Brandon King. These players, uh, because of the success that they have in CPL, 
uh, they were able to you know get contracts in IPL and also went on and played for West Indies. So it's a very good tournament. It's a strong tournament, very competitive. Uh, it's no longer when it was the islands versus the islands, uh, but it's good. This tournament has keep going from strength to strength. Uh, international players look forward to coming to the CPL. A lot of players see CPL maybe in the top three most competitive and best league in the world after IPL and maybe Big Bash. CPL is right up there. Excellent. DJ Bravo, we thank you for your contribution uh, to cricket overall. We thank you for your experts in the T20 game. Uh, nobody can say, well, it's boring when that man has ball in hand or bat in hand. <laughs> and we want to urge you to keep your body together so you can go, for, you can go on for longer than you have uh, thrilled us so far in your career. Congratulations for all that you have thank achieved. You. And we hope you achieve much more. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good, good, good. DJ Bravo there. 500 T20 wickets, 100 CPL wickets. Speaking of CPL, there's a game going on. Now. Let's take a <laughs> You don't need to predict things. We just spoke to the champion himself. Yes. And of course, we have TKR has all their players fit and ready to go. I know Sunil Narayan sat out today, but that's smart. He'll relax. And then when it's time to win the tournament, TKR will continue. So, George, don't get ahead of yourself. Remember, your team is the Patriots. Yes, we have a lot of equally matched teams, but... This is TKR1, On number this day four. in sports, you diss to the Patriots. When they win, <laughs> we're going to play back the state for you. As we go to the break, a reminder, the CPL continues on Thursday with two matches. In the morning encounter, the Patriots mm -hmm. will play the Zooks, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. ECT on Sportsmax. And in the late match, Warriors and Knight Riders clash Thursday, 4.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m. ECT, also on Sportsmax.